Right. Hello and welcome to uh, my guide to using Inkscape to make stencils for a laser printer. The laser printer I've got is the K40, the cheap Chinese thingy, and they advised me to use uh, Inkscape. For those who haven't watched the earlier videos that I've made regarding the uh, laser printer, please check out on that. You'll see that uh, what you actually need, you need Inkscape or you need a program to make the image. You send the image to Whisperer K40 Whisperer, which is the program which controls the uh, the laser printer. Uh, and I've made videos on that anyway. So first of all, we're going to show you how I what I do with Inkscape. Now, Inkscape is a wonderful program. It does it does so many different things. It's just unbelievable what what Inkscape can do. But all I'm going to show you is what I do to using in Inkscape. So obviously what you do, you, you've loaded the program, you get the program come up, and what we're going to go in is to new document. And here we come, it comes up to new document. Now, as a default, it always comes up with an A4 sheet of image area, because this program, you know, you can control a printer, or a laminator cutter, or it, it can control anything. But I'm using it to control the, the whisper and to make... Uh, laminate uh, stencils for cutting out for my wife with her card making. So the image area it's given me is A4. Well, I don't want A4. What I want is an area which is, uh, if I show you, which is basically that area there, which is 300, 300 by 160, because what I do is I make I make those, those size lemons. So we make two and we get two out of one sheet. So what we've got to do is make our image area this size. So you, you go over into File, which is up in the top left-hand corner, File, there, and you go to, down to Document Properties. I hope you can see that, Document Properties. Okay, we come up with this sheet here, which is Document Properties, New Documents. So this is what we're going to make. As you can see, there is the uh, image that uh, we've got on the screen at the moment, and the width is 210 by 297, which is, for those people who don't know, is the size of an A4 sheet of paper. So I want my width at 300, so what we're going to do is uh, get rid of those two, put 300 in, and so that's the width. Now the height, I would like it at 160. Uh, un unfortunately, my uh, my computer only ha doesn't have a number six on it. So what we're going to do is do it at, at we do 170. Okay, so so there we go. So we've now changed the image area. Can you see to this size here, which is the image area that uh, I require to make my my laminates. So we we now centre that. There's most of you a a quick button for centering. Uh, I'm not very good at quick buttons. I just tend to use the mouse, right? So this is the this is this is my total image area, which I'm going to split in two. We have an A side and a B side. So now what I need to do is to make a square here, which is going to be the size of my my laminates. Can you see? Uh, so we go up here and we get a square. So, and we'd, we'd, we'd just put a square, we don't have to worry about too much about the size of it at the moment. Uh, now, as you can see, the, the mouse is on square, so you have to go back to the arrow to go back to do the arrow work. So, and um, what they're saying is, oh, it's actually not too bad, because it's come up with uh, 152 by 154. Well, I've got a total image area of 300, so obviously... I need to cut out two squares that have come out of 300. So I'm going to go in at, at one at 145, I think, okay? Uh, so we're, the width of our square is going to be 145. Uh, we'll get rid of 977, shall we? Uh, there we go. I dare say I, I can do it to one decimal place somewhere, change it over, you know, uh, but you only have to do this one. So I can do it again, 145, 145. Five, oh, not one four five five, do we? Uh, we get rid of the eighty six, shall we? So we do that. So right. So now we've now got our image square, which is one four five by one four five. Okay. So that that is going to be that square. We've got to cut that out now. To cut out 
image the the image do you send to k40 whisperer if you want the laser cutter to cut you have to send the line or what you whatever you want to cut in red now this is already at red okay because i've done it before so if it, as, a, as a default that would have come out in in black normally so with what i'll do is i'll take it back to black now uh so that you can see how we do it so so there so now so now that line's black, so that's how you would have had it. So now we've now got to change that line to red because we want the laser cutter to cut that square out. Okay, so therefore we then highlight the square like that. Okay, we go up to object, which is up here. We go to fill and stroke. Okay, because you can fill the image with color or the, well, I just want the, the line. So we go over to the right hand side where it says fill and stroke. We clip on there, okay. We want it red, so we go right to the point there. I, I just go to there. So now that's going to make that line red. Can you see? So, so theoretically now, when I send this image, if I was to send this image to the laser printer, put the laminate in, it would cut out me a, a hole that size in that piece of paper or that piece of, uh, uh, of nylon. So now... So that is my what I would refer to my object. The object that I'm going to cut out is that square. It's 145 by 145. Okay. Now I need to put an image into there. So the way the way I do that is that I get another square, uh, and I just put the square in there. Now that's come out at red. So so that, there it is. Again, we're on square there. You have to get rid of the square. Go to the arrow. I always forget to do this. And click on that. Now that will give me the actual image area, not the object. And because my object is 145, I'm going to make my image 140. So we go into one one. Oh dear, we we've missed that. One four zero. Oh, uh, we get rid of the one nine nine, shall we? And then we will do. Do exactly the same on the other one. Now I know there's most probably quick things you can do this and shortcut keys and God knows what, but I, 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 the time I learned that, I find it's just as easy to do that, right? So now what we've now got is we've got the image area which will sit in the middle of of the object. Uh, now you see now we're still on square so we've got to go back to the arrow clip on the object there we go and now we can with our little arrows we can just move that so it's roughly center of where we want it right now for those people who noticed is that, that is also in red now we don't want to cut that right this is purely a guideline to make sure when i stick things uh, in the laminate that i want to work on they don't fall without that area because i like a five a five millimeter gap all the way around so so the uh, the laminate is quite solid so what we've got to do now because we don't want to cut that out we click on there we go to object path we go to fill and stroke okay uh, uh, we've we're on fill and stroke over here on the right hand side so we then clip on black so we want that as black as possible okay and then we come out of that. So now, as you can see, let's enlarge that up so you can just see that a little bit better. So there we go. So there's our there's our image. So there we so that we've got our object, which is the red, and then we've got our image, which is the black. So that is the left hand side. That's it. So what I, the way I work, whether this is the way you want to work, I, I'm I'm not sure. It's entirely up to you. Is that uh, I do everything this side, and then I just copy and paste and put it over there because I normally print two of the same laminate. It sounds silly, you don't have to, you could have them totally different. Uh, so therefore then I would then just go on, oh, sorry, uh, I, 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 I would just go on to that. I would then copy it, I would then paste it. No, I wouldn't, look at that, edit, uh, let's go back to edit, let's undo whatever I did then. So therefore we then lock that in together, we then copy it, and we then paste it and then that would I would then put that then there just use a little arrow just to to move it over so so 
Anyway, so that's uh, that's what I do. Uh, let's just undo that so that uh, edit. And I I know you can most probably do it a lot quicker. Uh, I do apologise. Right. right. So that's it. So now, so if I was working with uh, the image, say I wanted to put loads of snowdrops or leaves or anything uh, on here, so we'll put two circles on, shall we? Uh, like that. Again, we're not circles, so we go back to the arrow, change the arrow. If we wanted to cut that circle out, then what do we have to do? We have to change the colour to red, because it only works in red. So you go to red, you've got your fill and stroke there, you push the red button, which is what I do there. Have I done it? No, I don't think I have. Yeah, there we go. So that's now red. Uh, so now if I was to send that to the laser, to whisper, you know, the program that controls the laser, it would cut the object out, being the red line on the outside, and it would cut a round hole there. Wouldn't cut this one out because it's black. Okay, so what we do, we just get rid of that one now. We click on that, we do that, we do that. Right. So now if, if that was the laminate I wanted, uh, then to make two, all I would do is, well, yeah, I, I suppose I'm teaching you how to suck eggs, just do that, copy that, and paste it over to that side. So there it is pasted. So now when I send that to the laser printer, it would copy that out twice. So I would get two. I would get two, two, two areas like that. And that is really, that is basic Inkscape for what I want to do. Now, Inkscape is the, a wonderful program. It does everything. Uh, yeah, it, it's as good as Draw, Publisher, Adobe and all those. It, but it, it's totally free. Just download it, play with it. It takes the learning curve. Yeah, you know, you know, what I've done here seems quite simple. It took me ages to learn how to do this because I am not the cleverest person in the world. Uh, regarding uh, computers, I, I tend to suck and see. So, so that's it. So now look, we we get rid of that. What what I'll do is, is get rid of that now, and we say this is the end of guide one or lesson one, whatever you want to call it. So then we're we'll open it up to next and show you where we go from here next. So obviously we want to save that, save as. Uh, it's, it's got drawer in one, so we get rid of drawer in, and we just call that uh, IS Ink. Let's let's just put it in. Yeah, it's Ink Inkscape Ink, and we will put number one next to it. Okay, so it's Inkscape Ink number one. We've saved it to the desktop. I always save things to the desktop, then it's easier to find because it doesn't hide, doesn't go and hide, and we save that. So that is there now. So now we we've we've saved that. So that's how I finish up so something I can work on that is my my basis my uh, where I start from if I'm designing a new a, a, a new uh, stencil because anything I work in there I can do that do it times two and, and that works well for me and I can send that to the uh, the laser software and that controls that so Hopefully that's given you some guideline what I do. What you do with Inkscape, you can plan, do whatever you want with it. It, it, it is the most important thing you remember that the red line cuts. I think the blue line does, does something else and the green line does something else. But I only use the red line at the moment uh, because all I, all I do is, is cut, cut holes out, images out. As, as you can see, as you can see, see, see there on, on, on that. Uh, that stencil. That's one of one of my early stencils I made. So that's it. Uh, hopefully this has been some help. If it has, please subscribe. Uh, don't forget to tick the bell so you get notified when I load up the next one, which hopefully I'll load up next week. Oh, if there's anybody out there who wants me to design a particular stencil, rather than me just design snowdrops or raindrops or whatever, uh, if you want me to have a go at something, I, I don't mind doing that and showing you how I do it. Uh, yeah, uh, because, you know, it sounds how silly, you know, I made a stencil, what did I make a stencil of, it? of a sailboat, and just because I wanted it for my personal use, and then I sold quite a few of those. Anyway, that's, that, that's how we do it. So hopefully it's been of some interest. 
Don't forget, I've got a couple of other channels on, on YouTube. I've got Sailing with Ted or The Sailing Junkie. You can type in either. And that's all about my, my uh, journey in learning how to sail. And then you've got this, and then you've got uh, Mr. Whirligig, which is how I had the laser originally to make, to make whirly gigs. Uh, there's, there's another channel on that. And then you've got my traveling channel, which is called The Great Hair Tourist. So, yeah, I, yeah, I know I'm a bit silly. I like playing. Be good. Be happy. Speak to you soon, no doubt. Uh, don't forget, keep in contact with us. Don't forget to subscribe. And hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget, be kind to the animals.